Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Level Up workshop on quests, achievements, and dailies, part two, design. In this video, we're going to discuss how to draw on and support all of your game's content and systems to create quest tasks, how to think about difficulty and pacing of your quests, and how to maintain your quest system into the future. Are you ready? Here we go. So now that we've taken a look at the various uses for quest systems, let's take a look at how we actually design our quests. All right, we've got our spreadsheet all set up. It's time to fill it up with some content. And for that, we will be referencing this totally fictional fake Roblox game called Farm and Fun. Obviously, you'll be using your own games for your spreadsheet. So Farm and Fun is a farming game in which players plant and harvest crops and tend livestock in order to get materials to craft things like food and furniture that they sell or trade in order to upgrade their farms with even more buildings, more fields to plant crops in, and more livestock. As they earn XP from quests, players level up and unlock new crops, animals, recipes, and customizations. And along the way, they can role play as farmers in a farming community, trade with other players, and sell their wares at the farmer's market. So now that we know the core loop and the various systems in our game, we can start figuring out quest tasks, the activities that we're going to be asking players to do in our quests. We'll do that by examining each of our systems and breaking them down into discrete actions, making sure as we do that we are hitting every system in the game because we want to drive engagement in all of those systems and give players a variety of things to do. Here are our three categories of systems for farm and fun pulled from our core loop, farming, crafting, and social with some actions broken out like planting, watering, and harvesting crops. Now, in addition to touching every system in the game, we also want to touch all of the game's content because we want to encourage players to engage with all of it, especially if it's tied to progression because it encourages them to keep climbing that ladder. So here is some of the content that players can experience in Farm and Fun. In the farming system, they have farm plots where they grow their crops, seeds to plant, wheat seeds to name one crop specifically, and there's the items that they can get from harvesting the crops, like wheat, and other items from feeding animals, like eggs uh, collected from chickens. In the crafting system, they have recipes that they can unlock, tools, with a specific example being a hammer, and bread as a particular recipe they can get, and the baked bread item that they can get if they follow that recipe. So you might've noticed that I listed seeds and wheat seeds separately, as well as recipe and bread recipe and tool and hammer. And that's because those generic terms can be used to create quest tasks as well. And they give players more freedom than specific tasks because there are more options to complete them. The next step is to smash our list of actions and content together into a delicious task sandwich. For each action, ask what can the player blank, including both generic and specific terms. What can the player buy? Farm plots, seeds, wheat seeds, animal feed, livestock, chickens. Keep going until you have a full list from your game and then add to it when new systems and content are introduced. Now I've mentioned variety a couple of times and the importance of giving players an assortment of tasks. The best way I've found to efficiently ensure that the quests I'm designing give players that variety is to group systems into categories. In Farm and Fun, we have farming, crafting, and social. But here are some other categories that might fit your game better and some systems and activities that fall into them. If you were to pick one task out of each category, you would end up with a list that doesn't touch any system more than once, giving players an overall experience that is varied and interesting. 
One final note on tasks, beware of those that create a poor player experience. Remember, always respect your player's time. Consider how long it will take them to wait on timers or cooldowns or travel to a point of interest all the way over on the other side of the map. Some time-consuming tasks might be acceptable achievements, but take too long to be dailies. Try to make sure that the bulk of players' time is spent doing the fun part of the task, not whatever hoops they have to jump through in order to get to the fun, like traveling or waiting. Make sure that players are adequately rewarded for their time as well as their effort. Be careful about forcing irregular gameplay. Don't force your players to do something that compromises their ability to have fun, like requiring them to place specific decorations inside their house that they probably want to decorate according to their own style, or get third place in a match that they could otherwise get first place in. Be mindful of unlock requirements, like reaching a certain player level or using an item that requires significant grind to obtain. It's okay if your quests ask that extra bit of effort from your players, but make sure that the time and difficulty fall within reasonable parameters that you've defined and reward your players accordingly. Be especially careful about currency spend, particularly where it comes to hard currency. Players want to spend that currency on their own goals, not on yours. The same is true for tasks that waste resources like power-ups or crafting ingredients. Players may have their own uses in mind for those resources. So if you force them to use them or take them away, make sure they're adequately compensated. And finally, beware of tasks that create social conflict. Don't turn your players into trolls or inadvertent griefers or ask them to do things that inconvenience other players. For example, if you give players a task to join a group to fight their way through a dungeon and all you require is that they join a group five times, then some percentage of players will join a group and leave five times in a row, which is a pretty terrible experience for all of the players who are sincerely trying to form a group just to play the game. Now that we have some idea of what we want players to do in our tasks, we need to think about how challenging they are, how much effort players will have to put into them to complete them. And that really comes down to two things, how difficult the task is inherently and how difficult it is once you start considering the other factors that influence the player's ability to do them. So what do I mean by inherent difficulty? Well, that's the relative effort to do the task once. We created a column in our spreadsheet for that. Inherent difficulty factors include things like, is the task generic or specific? Generic tasks give the player more choice so they can make it as easy on themselves as they want. Whereas more specific tasks are as hard as you, the designer, want them to be. Tasks that require knowledge of the game can be tricky for new players in particular and include things like knowing the location of power-ups on a map or knowing successful strategies that take time and experience to learn. Then there's raw skill. For example, getting a headshot is harder than using a health power-up in a first-person shooter and also requires practice to master. And finally, social meaning that the task is dependent on the presence or cooperation of other players. You can't guarantee that's going to happen, so it's harder. Now, inherent difficulty can be increased by modifiers, things like quantity, the number of times the player is required to perform the task, well, milk 10 cows or plant tomatoes five times. Restrictions like level gates prevent newer players possibly from doing the task at all. Or caps that limit how much a player can do in a session. So if tomato crops don't unlock until the player reaches level 10, or starting players have a maximum of five plots on which to plant crops. 
or there may be timers that the player has to wait for, like a 60 second timer between planting and harvesting corn, or time limits that give the player a deadline for completing the task, or cooldowns that restrict how quickly the action can be done again. We're talking a lot about difficulty here because excessive difficulty can be dangerous. Remember, your players are not robots. Quests can pile up and become overwhelming, especially if there's no breathing room between quests or quest lines. Pacing is important. Interspersed periods of high activity and challenge with time to relax and just enjoy the game. Without adequate pacing, players may burn out from frustration at their failure, disappointment in missing out on rewards, and exhaustion from just trying to keep up. Those burned out players then probably leave your game and might even take their friends with them. Now, you might think, well, those players are weak. Maybe my game is just for the hardcores. But even the most casual players matter. And I can say that from experience. Once upon a time, I worked on a very successful game that had a massive player base until the decision was made to significantly increase the difficulty of our quests. In the short term, profit went up because players spent more hard currency in an effort to keep up. But then our more casual players started to burn out, get frustrated and quit, leaving only the very hardcore and high spending players. And then they started to leave too because they had no one left to play with. So keep that in mind when you're doing your difficulty balance for your quests. You don't want the game world to feel empty or for even your most dedicated players to struggle to play because everyone else has left. On the other hand, players may also leave if they're bored because they're not being challenged enough. Difficulty can be good when it's fair meaning that it's applied equally and doesn't break or change the rules unexpectedly. And when players know what to do in order to overcome the challenge, maybe they need to level up or invest in better gear or adapt their strategy. Those are all things that are within the player's control. And if they go through the effort to do them, then they should be rewarded adequately, commensurate with the investment that they put in. And when they have recovered from the last challenge, just to reemphasize the earlier point about pacing. The key to mastering difficulty is to understand the effort that you're requiring from players. So starting with who is your target player? This is especially important when you participate in events like Metaverse Champions. You're inviting new players into your game. If they're confused or feel like the tasks are taking too long, they'll leave and dislike your game. Even quests that are fun and simple for returning players may be frustrating for new players. For example, finding items scattered throughout a map that they are not familiar with. If you're too clever in your hiding places, new players might really struggle to find them and take much longer to complete the task than they might be willing to spend. Which brings us to my next point. You should also consider how long it will take the average player to complete the task. Compare that to your game's average play session length. You don't necessarily want the player to spend all of their time completing quests, especially dailies, because they have their own things that they enjoy doing in your game. Or in the case of new players, they want to explore and find what's fun for them. And in the case of event players, there are other games that they need to play and a larger event that they want to participate in. So make sure that your quests don't require literal hours of gameplay to complete. If they do, players probably won't complete the quests and will be angry that they spent so much time and didn't earn the rewards. Incidentally, if you do have collection quests like that, I recommend considering hiding more items than you require your players to find because those last few can be super tough otherwise. Another thing to consider is what are the blockers? These are the level locks, caps, and cooldowns that I mentioned earlier. And lastly, has the player already done it? For example, if you have a task to clear a dungeon for the first time, can they do it again? Is it something that only happens once and now they're stuck on the quest? Do you automatically count their progress? 
or make them do it again. Depending on the task, doing it again might not be very onerous, so not a big deal to redo it. But for other tasks, that could be asking a lot, in which case your players would appreciate having their prior accomplishments count. Now, this always bears repeating. Your game will always be easier for you than for most of your players. This is one reason why playtesting is so important with other people besides yourself. It gives you a better sense of the actual effort required for the average player. In order to keep difficulty in check, I recommend establishing some rules. So what's the highest quantity you can reasonably expect a player to complete for each task? How much time is too much to spend on any given task? This is especially important for dailies. Are there tasks that are so inherently difficult that they should be restricted to achievements? Now this badge from Sharkbite is a great example of a difficult task reserved for an achievement. So it would be reasonable to ask players to unlock boats in the game, but the most expensive high level boats will take players a long time to unlock. So the only place that that task would make sense is under an achievement. It's also important that players have a sense of progress, especially early on in their experience of the game. They need short-term goals they can achieve, not just long-term grinds. So provide a variety of goals and difficulties when building your quests. For more guidance on balancing the difficulty of your quests, check out the Level Up workshop hosted by DSPAV on Season Pass Feature Balance, where he walks through building a spreadsheet and formulas for creating a satisfying experience. So far, we've only talked about individual tasks. The quests can have multiple tasks, and the player may have multiple quests active at once. So it's important to consider complexity and the difficulty of the overall experience. Balance difficulty for the experience as a whole. Quests with multiple tasks or series of quests like dailies and quest chains. What's the difficulty of the quest that comes before and after this one? Hitting the player with multiple difficult quests in a row can create a frustrating experience and lead to burnout. Ideally, you want to create a satisfying difficulty curve. So if you remember back in English class, when you learned about story structure, the action and tension in a story slowly builds up to a climax and then gradually decreases toward the end. You want to create a similar experience in your quest chains. Ease your players in at the start, then require increasing amounts of effort until you reach a peak. Then let players relax a bit again before cranking up the effort all over again. Vary those peaks in frequency and intensity. And then always make sure that you give your players a break at the end. So they wrap up on a feeling of satisfaction rather than frustration and relief that it's over. And then they can enjoy the rewards of their efforts. This is especially important for limited time quests. You don't want your players to feel like they put in a ton of effort only to be blocked at the end by unreasonable requirements. It's better that they feel like they have a chance to finish on time. So this is an example when empathy for your players is so important as game designers. Now you want to keep it interesting with variety, something I've already mentioned. You know, give them lots of different kinds of tasks so that they don't feel like they're doing the same thing over and over again. And allow for min-maxing when possible which is just putting forward the minimum effort for the maximum reward. In this context, players can strategize their way into making progress on multiple tasks at once. So for example, if I have two quests, one to plant 10 seeds of any kind and another to harvest 20 wheat, I can choose to plant 10 wheat seeds, completing the first quest and setting myself up to half complete the second when the crop is ready to harvest. And I'll feel pretty smart about that, and your players will too. You can also give players a hand by designing one quest to set them up for success in the next. For example, by having them gather ingredients in one quest and then use them to bake a cake in the next one. And the effort that they put into the previous quest has paid off, and they'll appreciate that. 
No matter how carefully you control the difficulty of your quests, players could still be overwhelmed if they have too many active quests or if they finish a quest line and then another one immediately starts. They need a break sometimes, especially if completing quests isn't the whole point of your game. So you can help with that by limiting the number of quests that they can have active at a given time or by allowing them to decide when they want to start a new quest and pacing out your quest-based events so that players have some time to recover in between. And also consider providing quest management tools that allow players to hide all that the quests they're currently working on or even delete quests that they're not interested in if you do have a significant number of quests in your game. Finally, keep your quest system alive. When you add new systems, create quests to encourage players to engage with them. Swap out your dailies. Refresh those tasks from time to time so players aren't being asked to do the same thing every day. And use your quest system to surface and promote all of your systems, content, and events. And keep your rewards relevant. If you add new currencies, resources, or consumables in your game, Evaluate whether it makes sense to add those rewards into your quest system so that players have another source for those items and continue to value your quests. All right, and with that, we are ready for more questions. We have two anonymous questions. The first one says, you mentioned that you shouldn't alienate novice players, but is it okay to implement quests geared toward a certain player cohort? Absolutely. Um, it makes total sense to have quests for players in different stages of their journey. And you can tailor those quests to them by player level, for example, and tying those quests to those player levels so that you know, when by the time they get to those quests, uh, they are prepared for them. You know exactly where they are in terms of skill and knowledge they should have of the game based on how long they've been playing and how much progress they've made. And our last question, um, how often should you implement quests in your game? If you implement dailies, does it matter if we do less quests? That's a very personal question related to your game and to the players of your game, how engaged they would be in a quest system, how much it makes sense for the mechanics in your game. Um, so it really depends. But yeah, there are a lot of games that just have a set of dailies and that's it in terms of quest content. And that's enough to get value out of a quest system to say, you know, I am giving players a list of things that they can do. I'm reminding them of the different systems in the game. I'm giving them an opportunity to earn some currency. And, you know, that might be sufficient for your game. All right, that's all we have. Okay, thank you for the great questions. Thanks for watching part two of our Level Up workshop on quests, achievements, and dailies. Next week, we'll drop the third and final video of this workshop which is all about writing quest text that helps your players know what to do and stay engaged with your quest system. Join us right back here on the Developer Relations channel, and don't forget to like and subscribe so we can continue to level up together.